On the 24th of May, 2023, a man tragically passed away in the Vinduk Central Isolation Unit. Why was he isolated, you ask? Well, he was diagnosed with a deadly virus known as the Crimean Congo Hemorrhagic Fever. Of note, this man had 57 contacts. Damn! The executive director, Dr. Ben Nangobe, um, updated us that he had uh, 22 contacts from Hobabis, or the Maheke region, and 35 uh, contacts from uh, Vintuk, uh, and all of which we essentially healthcare workers that were taking care of him in the central isolation unit. That's a lot of contacts. Um, is the Congo fever such a scary virus? Now, I'll tell you this. So if you fear Ebola or yellow fever, then you should definitely fear uh, Congo hemorrhagic fever because it's kind of like it's dis their distant cousin. So it's not really like something that you can walk away from like a mild flu or, you know, like a headache or whatever. Symptoms include headache, high fevers, very high fevers, back pain, joint pain as well, stomach pain. People vomit quite a lot and they also have bruising on the underside of their palate. Now, you'll notice that we're throwing around this word hemorrhage quite liberally, um, but it's essentially just a medical term for bleeding that is uncontrollable, mm -hmm. more or less. Yeah, so um, now by about four days, you start noticing bruising under, you know, bruising under your skin, you know, from your mouth, like uh, Alex said, you start experiencing some nosebleeds, but by about two weeks, you start noticing bleeding from other orifices, um, and <laughs> if you make it that far. <laughs> All right, two disclaimers. First and foremost, we're not trying to fear monger. We're mm -hmm. just trying to give you guys the information. Yeah. Number two, you do not have to be from Congo or Congolese to get Crimean hemorrhagic fever. Yeah, we know what some of you were thinking. <laughs> when you came to COVID. COVID in China, yeah. <laughs> so um, the disease was first found in 1994 um, in Crimea, which is an island surrounded by the Black Sea. And at the time it was called the Crimean hemorrhagic fever because people didn't really know what caused it. So later on in around 1956, the virus was again isolated in Congo. Therefore it was given the denomination Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever. So as of the making of this video, we've had about 13 deaths recorded in Iraq alone. Um, so she's quite international as you can see. Yeah. If you enjoy content like this, please comment, like, subscribe yeah. and follow us on the Instagram at third space underscore so um the virus itself is a tick-borne virus yeah so it is found in a wide array of wild as well as domestic animals such as goats sheep and cattle mm -hmm. so um the infection comes from a tick bite uh or getting into contact with uh, uh fluids from infected animals uh, normally at the time of slaughter and it can also be now transmitted from human to human when you come into contact with their body fluids such as saliva blood uh, etc yeah so the people at risk are people who usually work with animals, so people in the slaughterhouse and farmers. Once infected, they can then transmit this to other people. So the contact of other human body um, fluids as well as blood can also transmit the virus. All right, so the treatment for Crimean hemorrhagic fever is largely supportive. Uh, by this we mean, you know, thoughts and prayers. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. Um, and just supportive care. Basically, we're giving you what you need uh, in terms of, you know, fever control, pain management, um, IV fluids to replace your electrolytes, etc. And in the cases of severe bleeding, we might give you some blood products and, you know, maybe oxygen if, you, if the need arises. Yeah, um, there have been some studies that have shown patient improvement on an antiviral drug known as ribovirin, but we won't go too deep into that. All right, now let's bring it back home here to Namibia. How seriously should we take this outbreak? Is this another lockdown? Well, according to the WHO, you need a single recorded and confirmed case of Crimean uh, Congo hemorrhagic fever to consider it an outbreak, and therefore measures should be put in place to kind of curb the spread. Yeah, so out of the 57 contacts that we mentioned earlier in the video, four were quite symptomatic, but luckily their tests came back negative and they're doing well today. When acted upon quickly, the outbreak is usually very well contained, and this is evidenced by past experiences that we've had even here back home uh, in 2016, 2018, and quite recently in 2020 when we had an outbreak and we had recorded uh, quite a significant number of fatalities. Yeah, so that's it on the Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever. We hope you learned something new. My name is Phil. I'm Alex, and, and this, this is The Third, third Space. space. <laughs>